Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, you'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set. And I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. CNN has issued the invitation for another debate between President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris. The proposed date is October 23rd in their Atlanta studios with no audience and the same rules as the June debate between Trump and Biden. Harris says yes so far. Donald Trump says no. Details a little later in today's show. Kamala Harris received another endorsement. This one should get every taxpaying American's attention. The National Treasury Employees Union represents various federal agents, including those of the Internal Revenue Service. Can you say more taxes? President Biden became confused and lost track of events during a press conference alongside India's prime minister over the weekend, just a day after the First Lady chaired the first full cabinet meeting in almost a year. Who's running the country? Uh, Fox News visits some college campuses around the country and found that college students are concerned with the direction our country is headed in this election year. And finally, the deadline for voter registration ends soon. Absentee ballots will begin to be mailed, and early voting will start next month in most states. Joining us later in today's show is Curtis Smith, chairman of the Spartanburg County Republican Party, to break it all down for us. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Vice President Kamala Harris accepted an invitation to debate Donald Trump on CNN next month, challenging the former president to consent to a rematch. Trump immediately rejected the idea, according to the Washington Post. The statement released by the Democrat nominee's campaign on Saturday, Donald Trump should have no problem agreeing to this debate. It is the same format and setup as a CNN debate he attended and said he won in June when he praised CNN's moderators' rules and ratings. The debate, of course, then was against Joe Biden. Harris and Trump debated on September 10th. Uh, President Trump delivered his answer at a rally in North Carolina. This was in Wilmington, North Carolina. The rally that earlier in the summer was uh, canceled because of of a bad thunderstorm. I happened to be at this one, and uh, boy, did it get bad quickly. Uh, Trump promised then that he would reschedule, and he did over the weekend. He told the crowd at North in North Carolina, quote, the problem with another debate is that it's just too late, he said. Voting has already started by October 23rd. Um, of course, this is just two weeks before the election day. CNN did this after Trump had already suggested that he would not debate again. CNN is, uh, is partnering with the Harris campaign to try to make Trump look bad. They're trying to pressure him. The old, you know, hey, challenge your opponent to a debate when you know they're not going to accept the challenge. Trump's uh, campaign staff had given mixed signals about another debate, uh, according to an article in Politico. Uh, Trump, of course, had posted earlier on Truth Social that he would not debate again. CNN confirmed that it had issued the invitations but did not immediately respond to Trump's rejection of the proposed uh, second debate. Now, if I'm Trump, I think I would agree to the debate on CNN if Kamala Harris agrees to a debate on Fox News. What, because, you know, she's quick to say that she will not debate on Fox News. So why does she expect Trump to debate her again on CNN? Uh, CNN's, uh, in, in their statement, uh, to the, to the press, uh, made it clear that this debate 
would be in their Atlanta studios. There would not be a live audience. Uh, again, it would be uh, it'd be very similar to the rules that Trump agreed to when he debated Joe Biden. Harris's campaign said it would be unprecedented in modern history for there to be just one general election debate. And she's right, there would be. But odder things have happened. Should he debate her? Should Donald Trump accept this debate? What do you think about, about my idea of him challenging her, saying, okay, I will we'll agree to CNN if you will agree to Fox? Because she very quickly, when Fox issued the invitation, literally the night of the ABC debate, she immediately rejected it. So why does she expect Trump to, expect, to, to accept the invitation to CNN, a network that he knows is not fair to him, when she's declining to accept one from a network, Fox News, that she believes is not fair to her? We'll see. President Joe Biden seemed dazed and confused <laughs> as he lost track of events during a press conference. This was alongside India's prime minister on Saturday. The incident came when Biden was supposed to introduce the prime minister, Narendra Modi. Uh, this was in Wilmington, Delaware. He instead became confused and appeared to think, I guess maybe, that he was waiting for, for a question from the reporters. An announcer then interceded and introduced Modi following an uncomfortable long pause. Here's the exchange. So I want to thank you all for being here. And now, uh, who am I introducing next? Who's next? Distinguished guests, the Prime Minister of the Republic of India. Now, that was just weird, and all of that silence, and I left it in there because I wanted you, you to hear it. In the video, you can see people literally looking around thinking, what is happening here? Who, who is going to intercede? What is he doing? Because when, he's, when he looks and, he, and he's kind of irritated, you know, who's next? And people are just literally looking around thinking, thinking what's happening? Uh, just just another weird exchange with uh, Joe Biden. The uh, the interaction, of course, came uh, just a day. This was Saturday. On Friday, he received heavy criticism for allowing First Lady Jill Biden to literally run a cabinet meeting. Biden convened his cabinet on Friday for the first time. Now, get this. First time the full cabinet has met together since October 2nd, 2023. Almost a year. And who chairs it? The First Lady. She joined him. The President explained that, uh, that the First Lady's presence there, he said, here and across previous administrations, First Ladies have attended these meetings for specific reasons. This is the first time Jill has joined us, and it goes to show how important the issue is, which she's about to speak to. He concluded by handing off to his wife, saying, it's all yours, kid. The New York Post reported that that the First Lady, seated at the head of the Cabinet Room's board uh, table, read from a binder about maternal health initiatives for four and a half minutes after her husband spoke for just two minutes off the top of the meeting. Uh, the President traditionally sits at the center of the table with Cabinet members on seated in, in their order of, of founding by their departments. The last sitting First Lady to attend her husband's Cabinet meeting appears to be Hillary Clinton. So Melania never... Never attended, nor ev evidently, according to, to the New York Post, I guess Michelle Obama did not either. But Jill Biden was there on Friday. I, I don't know why they even called a cabinet meeting if Joe Biden is not capable of chairing it. Uh, it does show you one thing. It shows you that th the influence that Jill Biden has, and it shows you that evidently she's... Uh, she, she has a lot of influence of what Joe Biden does. Uh, the New York Post said that Jill Biden is, quote, considered by insiders to be the most influential first lady since Edith Wilson, who tightly controlled access to her husband, President Woodrow Wilson, after he suffered a debilitating stroke in October of 1919.
Social media users warn that a major IRS-affiliated union's recent endorsement of Vice President Kamala Harris is a serious red flag, and it is. We all should take note. The National Treasury Employees Union is a union that represents various federal agents, including the Internal Revenue Service put out a statement this week praising Harris for increasing the IRS's budget and endorsing her for president. Ex-users saw it as more proof that she should get nowhere near the White House. Conservative commentator Joey Manorano announced on X, the IRS agents union just endorsed Kamala Harris. That should tell you all of what she plans to do to us. Get ready to be taxed to death. Vote Trump. The... NTEU explained its reason for endorsing Harris in a press release stating that the Biden-Harris administration also delivered agency budgets that provide federal employees with additional staffing and resources, including significant new investments to rebuild the IRS under the Inflation Reduction Act. You may recall they had got about $80 billion as part of that to hire an additional 87,000 more IRS agents who are going to come after us. You and me. It's not not just the wealthy. They're going to come after the middle class, as Kamala Harris so proudly likes to tell us she's a part of. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Email's always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. PhD Weight Loss wants you to know, yes, you can. You can get back to your ideal healthy weight. Yes, you can get back into sizes you thought you'd never see again. And yes, you can get rid of that harmful belly fat all without becoming dependent on medication loaded with side effects. Hi, it's Joey Hudson here. PhD Weight Loss encourages and equips you to lose weight the healthy, natural way and keep it all for the rest of your life. Dr. Ashley Lucas, a licensed registered nutritionist, developed a solid plan that works. Trust me, I lost 30 pounds. You see, PhD Weight Loss removes the guesswork. They literally tell you exactly what to eat each day while you watch the pounds melt away. But they also teach you to think about food differently and to learn to anticipate and navigate situations that make you want to indulge. PhD coaches will teach you to believe finally that yes, you can do it. With no gimmicks or lifelong medications, finally lose the weight and keep it off. Yes, you can. Call today. PhD Weight Loss, 864-644-1900. That's 864-644-1900. Or go to myphdweightloss.com. A lot of text messages. Keep them coming, please. Your emails are welcome too. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Faye writes on the text line, Joey, new week, new concerns. WHO meeting Sunday and Monday about digital identity. Big Brother China type surveillance. Scary. Also, how would Governor McMaster handle Haitians if they were brought into South Carolina during the night? Hard to believe these are worries of American citizens. Thank you, Joey, for your hard work to spread the truth. Thank you, Faye. I appreciate your your interaction. I can always count on Faye to send me a quick text or uh, email and uh, keep keep me in line and keep me informed too as well. Albert writes, why are the Democrats on board with Kamala's proposed unrealized capital gains tax? Do they think that they'll be exempt or are they ignorant of financial matters? Uh, Albert, I think that's probably the case. They're ignorant of just the effect this will have on them. Uh, he goes on to write, in my area, there are lots of Democrats. They have Harris signs in their yards who have inherited their homes and properties. Don't they realize that they'll be paying a tax on at least the value of the property at inheritance versus today's value? Albert, they really don't understand what this means. You know, it's interesting that you text me this because Peg and I were walking over the weekend. We took Jesse and Simon out for a walk. We quite often do. We have a great walking trail area that we love to do when we were over at Lake Kiwi. And as we were walking, we were talking about a couple of houses in our neighborhood that are for sale and just the the values of some of the homes in our area that have just really escalated uh, in the past few years. And we just feel very blessed to have been able to purchase one there years ago before the uh, the exploding prices. But Peg asked, well, you know, what would we do? If, if Kamala Harris is elected and she's able to enact this, does this mean that we would have to pay uh, taxes on the value of our home now before we even sell it? And that's exactly what it means. It's the most absurd thing that I've ever heard a candidate talk about or propose. And that issue alone, there's several issues that that single issues that could keep someone 
or should keep someone from voting for Kamala Harris. Any American who owns their own home, that in itself should keep you from voting for Kamala Harris because she wants you to to be taxed on an unrealized gain on that home before you ever even sell it. Jordan writes, Everyone is hanging on the words of Trump today as he stated he probably won't run in 2028 if he loses this election. I'm not sure if that's renewed fervor for the Democrat Party or more adrenaline for the Republican Party. But I was thinking about how Democrats always throw the word democracy around. Democracy is on the ballot. I mean, their party name is based off of it. Is no one aware that we're, in fact, not a democracy? We are a republic, completely different governing ideologies. You're so right, Jordan. Um, They do always like to talk about uh, uh, defending, preserving our democracy. You're right. We are a republic. Uh, Texter, hey, Joey, I'm a 36-year-old white male who goes to church every Sunday with four kids. I live in the mountains of North Carolina. And I got a call from a pollster, but I was so skeptical with the way that they were asking the questions that I never answered completely honest or many cases would not answer the questions at all. And, you know, I appreciate your text and you're right. I mean, so many people, particularly, I think, Trump supporters are hesitant to tell some stranger on the phone who they're going to support. And and this is one of the the reasons that polling cannot can sometimes not be reliable. I, I mentioned the other day that quite often polling on issues is more reliable than polling on individual candidates because someone is more likely to tell you how they feel about, say, the economy or inflation or the or abortion or immigration. But when it gets down to who you're actually going to vote for, it gets a little trickier on that. Appreciate your your text as well. You can uh, you can always text me. You can email me, joey at joeyhudson.com. You know, it was interesting. Fox News Digital sort of did a man-on-the-street type thing with American college students, asking them what they think about the election this year. Many of them expressed their concern about the state of our country and where we're headed. Uh, they, they taught with students at the University of Tennessee, at New York University, and they spoke about how they feel about the direction of our country and what some of their biggest concerns are when it comes to our future. Lily from the University of Tennessee, for example, said it's currently a very divisive time for the country and added that former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris are complete polar opposites. Several said that they're hopeful for their own personal futures, even if they're not as bullish on our country. Here's uh, an example, uh, just a, a quick montage of some of the responses. I think right now it's kind of heading in a negative direction. Uh, It's quite scary knowing how much information is censored these days. My biggest fear is like not being able to afford my education. I think we're going in the wrong direction. It's a very um, divisive time. I'm really, really not happy with either of our presidential candidates. um, And it's really upsetting to see that those are the people in power. I don't think we're going in a good direction at all. I think right now it's kind of heading in a negative direction because I feel like everyone's lost hope of it. So no one knows how to like move forward. Maybe after the elections, there'll be a turn like, okay, something's been decided. Maybe we can like aim for something positive. But right now I I think it's negative. Uh, It's quite scary knowing how much information is censored these days. A lot seems to be brushed under the rug and exposed later on. I'd say we're not moving in a very good direction right now. It's a very um, divisive time for people, especially at this election. I mean, they are complete polar opposites. And I think it's really hard to have that conversation with people and kind of have a peaceful conversation about disagreements. So I don't know. I, I hope we're going in the right direction. I do enjoy this country. I love the freedoms that we have, and I hope... They stay protected. And, you know, they have reason to be concerned about the direction we're headed. Uh, They express concerns about the state of the economy, about the cost of their education. They, Alex, who is a student at George Washington University, described himself as far to the left, said that inflation and rent prices, 
the housing crisis is something that he thinks the Biden administration did not really tackle nearly enough, he said, and added that securing a ceasefire in Gaza was another top concern for him. Now, the reason that it's important about uh, to know what these young people are thinking about, USA Today says that voter registration is breaking records as Election Day approaches among the young people. Over 150,000 people registered to vote on at vote.org on Tuesday's National Voter Registration Day. 80% of those were people under 30 years of age. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Emails always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, you're totally remodeling the kitchen when it's time to get those new appliances. When you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a Discounted Appliance Warehouse they treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at DAWPickens.com, DAWPickens.com. On our guest line, Chairman of the Spartanburg County Republican Party, Curtis Smith. Welcome. How are you, sir? Oh, good morning, Joy. And we're doing well. Uh, we've, we've been we've been out of South Carolina for uh, several weeks now. Uh, started in uh, July when we were delegates at the Republican convention. And uh, we learned an awful lot talking to all the people on the floor, uh, the governor of Alaska and Mike Johnson and and all the people we met and, and associated with was was very, very good. Yeah. And then we went from there to uh, our, our place up in Michigan and Wisconsin right on the border is uh, Marinette, Wisconsin, and Menominee, Michigan. And we worked with the Republican Party in Marinette, which is Wisconsin. Uh, those people are doing a fantastic job. As a matter of fact, Wisconsin had problems with Zuckerbucks in the year 2020 when they came in, and I believe a lot of these consultants took over the Green Bay, Wisconsin Republican Party and the election commissions and ran kind of a shoddy show and they put an end to that. There's no Zuckerbucks and there's nothing happening. And it looks like Wisconsin is going to have a pretty honest election. I do know that the state party gave a lot of money to the counties and they've done an excellent job of getting the votes out in Wisconsin. Yeah. Michigan, on the other hand, uh, they're, they're still infighting. I know the Northern part of the state is doing one thing and the Southern parts doing another. So I'm more optimistic about Mr. Trump in Wisconsin than I am in Michigan. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk for a minute uh, as we look towards November the 5th. Uh, literally, uh, we're we're on the uh, home stretch now. Uh, some states have already started early voting. More will be coming in in, as, in the coming weeks. For example, Minnesota started in-person absentee voting September the 20th. Illinois begins later this week on the 26th. Uh, Mississippi has uh, no early voting, or at least they don't call it early voting. What they have is absentee voting with an approved excuse, which begins tomorrow. So every state has a different system. They call early voting something different. Let's talk more specifics of South Carolina and what we have in South Carolina and what our listeners can expect. Yes, we have early voting. As a matter of fact, it's two weeks before the election. It starts on October 24th. And it runs through November the 2nd, except we're not open for early voting on Sunday, October 27th. And the hours uh, here in Spartanburg County are 830 to 6, and we're going to have four locations. And we want people to go out and vote early. Bring your ideas, just like voting at your precinct, your bank, your vote. We'll know who's coming to vote. We know who to, to go after if they haven't voted early. And the Election Commission here in Spartanburg County is expecting about 40 percent of the votes to be cast in this two-week period. And you can cast your vote at any one of the four locations. Just bring your ID card in. It'll be just like you're at your poll on Election Day. 
And you can do it at the election office at 366 North Church Street, or you can do it at the Boiling Springs Library, 871 uh, Double Springs Road in Boiling Springs, or the Woodruff Library, 270 East Hayward Street in Woodruff, or Middle Tiger Library, 170 Gross Road in Lyman. And it, we're setting it up so that there's very little waiting. We're going to have like 20 to 40 of the machines set up. We're going to have a mass bank so that people can come in and vote. We're expecting about 70% of the 200,000 registered voters in Spartanburg County to vote in this election. It is going to be probably the best election, and Mr. Trump is doing a fantastic job here in Spartanburg County. Yep. So absentee. If you there are very few reasons that you can get an absentee ballot. You're in the military, you're in the hospital, you're someplace where you can't get there the two weeks before in early voting. Um, you know, you, you're physically incapable of being there. You can in person or by mail ask for an absentee ballot, and you have to do it by 5 p.m. on October 25th, and you then will get a ballot mailed to you. And it has to be returned by 7 p.m. on Election Day to the election office, either by mail or in person. And if you bring it or somebody brings it in, they have to have a photo ID to turn it in. Yeah. Curtis Smith with me today, chairman of the Spartanburg County Republican Party. So, Curtis, now you you use a couple different terms there, early voting, absentee voting. Uh, Absentee voting, they will literally mail you a ballot, correct? Do you have to have a reason Mm -hmm. To request an, an, an absentee ballot? Yes, you do. Yes, okay. you do. There's very few of them now. You have to be out of the country, like military or a military spouse, or your business, your company has sent you someplace, or you're in the hospital and you cannot get to the early voting at one of our four locations, or you won't be, you can't get to election day. You have to have the reason for applying for an absentee ballot. The, because of the early voting, the number of reasons have really dropped down to that you really have to have a great reason. Yeah. And you have to have your name, your date of birth, the last four digits of your Social Security number in order to request an absentee ballot. Yeah. Now, let's talk a minute. Obviously, you talked about the four locations that Spartanburg County will have open. Um, that's going to be different with every county, though, right? And, and I guess the best place, if you're listening and you're in Greenville or you're in Anderson or Pickens, Oconee, or, uh, you can go to scvotes.gov, and they have a complete list that's there, true. correct? That is correct. And, and uh, everybody should go in and check. The reason is we have a lot of help on Election Day Because people don't know that a lot of the precincts, a lot of the voting locations sometimes change on you. We have 112 precincts. However, we've combined some. And therefore, where you think you might vote might be another location. And therefore, everyone should go to scvotes.gov and check your voter registration and where you vote. That is a very – on your cell phone, just do it. Go to scvotes.gov. And check everything. It is much better to find the problem now than at the poll. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's a it's a great website. It's mobile friendly. I'm looking at it right now. I, I just looked up Anderson County, for example. Anderson County uh, has uh, looks like they're going to have four locations: the Anderson County Board of Voter Registration Office on Main Street in Anderson, then Pendleton Library, then the Powdersville Library, then the Watkins Community Center. Uh, and you can just go down the list. You can, you know, you just click on the, the county that you're looking for, and it pops right up, and it and it gives you uh, all the information you need. I'm looking at Greenville County now. Greenville, uh, they're going to have multiple locations uh, in addition to the, uh, the the county office. So uh, just go to scvotes.gov, and you can if, if you intend to vote early, and you'll you can see where you need to go. That's correct. And again, you know, there are four locations for Spartanburg County, three libraries, the Boiling Springs Library, the Woodruff Library, and the Middle Tiger Library, and then downtown at the office. And you don't have to go the one closest to your house. Any one of them you can go to to vote. Yep. All right, let's talk for a minute now about voter registration. Is there still time for people to register to vote if they are not? Yes, I will see. You can vote. Re- voter registration is all the way up until 30 days before the election. So that is coming up on us here. It'll be the early October here for voter registration. And let me go down through all my notes right here. 
Um, and, and that would be uh, also if you needed to uh, possibly change your registration. Maybe you moved since you voted last, uh, and you you yes, you, updating you, it. Yes, you do that at your at your county voter registration office. Yes, October the seventh. You need to have all this done by in order to have the thirty days before November the 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 fifth. Yeah. So you you need to go in and make sure you're right. I I have heard and seen many times people come in and they say, oh. I, I thought this was right, and they don't. They're not there on the poll book. So check your registration. Yep, uh, that's uh, very important because you don't want to get to your polling place and then be turned away <laughs> for whatever reason. So, uh, and, and maybe <laughs> maybe, or, maybe or you go have to a, the wrong polling place. Yes, uh, yes, and they have to look you up. Yep. Yes. So, uh, and it's very important because we need everyone to show up and vote. Uh, come uh, November the 4th or preferably prior to. So, uh, Curtis Smith, it's always a pleasure. Appreciate appreciate what you do in Spartanburg County, and uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, few weeks here now as we head into November 5th. It is going to be a very exciting week. So t- I'll tell you what, we're all working hard. I know that South Carolina is uh, going to go for Mr. Trump, and, and I do believe Georgia and North Carolina, but we do need help. Uh, you know, Georgia has some of those drop boxes out yeah. there that North Carolina doesn't. But we do need to make sure that we get out the vote in both of those states. Yep, for sure. Curtis Smith, chairman of the Spartanburg County Republican Party. Again, it's scvotes.gov if you're not sure uh, about your registration and where you can vote early. Always a pleasure. Appreciate your time today. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message. And your emails are always welcome, Joey, at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman, they do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done and you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at firm and ford doesn't even have to be a ford they they service all makes and models visit my friends at firm and ford online at firm and firmandford.com former president donald trump indicated during an interview yesterday that he will not run again for the oval office in 2028 if his current bid falls short in november trump was a guest on Full Measure, which is hosted by Cheryl Atkinson. It aired yesterday morning. At the end of the interview, Atkinson asked Trump if he was not successful uh, in his bid for the presidency this year, could he see himself running again in four years? If you're not successful this time, do you see yourself running again in four years? No, I don't. No, I don't. I think that that will be, uh, that will be it. I don't see that at all. I think that hopefully we're going to be successful. Mr. President, thank you for the interview. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cheryl. And I'm not sure anyone expects him to run again. Uh, Let's let's just pray and hope that he wins in November and we don't even have to have this discussion. But think about it. He's 78 years old. To to be in his early 80s and to try to run again, look, look at Joe Biden. And I think Trump probably knows his limitations better than anybody. This is his third run for the presidency. Uh, he, he beat Hillary Clinton and uh, in 2016 in what was considered uh, an upset. I mean, you and I kind of thought he was going to win. Hillary Clinton had no idea. She, it never entered her mind that she would lose to, to who she, someone she thought was a, not a politician, someone she thought was just a TV reality star in, in addition to a real estate mogul. But Hillary Clinton never dreamed that Donald Trump would beat her in 2016. 
Of course, I'm not sure Donald Trump ever dreamed that Joe Biden would beat him in 2020. It's just how things, when it comes to politics, it's so unpredictable of what people do when they go into that polling booth. Uh, With uh, just over six weeks to go until Election Day on November the 5th, early voting and absentee voting is underway in a growing number of states. A number of public opinion polls agree that the race is going to be decided in key battleground states. It's going to come down to fall within the margin of error of so many of these polls. Polls also show that Kamala Harris has a healthy advantage among voters when it comes to certain issues. For example, abortion. If you're someone who supports abortion, you're going to vote for Kamala Harris, most likely. Trump has an equally large margin, though, uh, dealing with things like the border, immigration, and the economy. People think Donald Trump can turn our economy around. When it it comes to the economy, the polls show the issue remains a top issue on the minds of the American voters. A Fox News national poll, uh, also in the field entirely post-debate, spotlighted that 39% of voters surveyed And again, I trust the polls more so when it comes to issues than I do asking you about individual candidates whom you're going to vote vote for. 39% of voters surveyed said the economy was their most pressing issue. This was even ahead of immigration, which was was second at 16%, and above abortion, which was at 15%. All other issues tested were in single digits. So I know you get tired of hearing me say this, but it's going to come down to the economy. It's the economy stupid. That's what it's going to come down to. People, we're in a tough situation right now. And people, even some of these young people that we heard from earlier in the show, they recognize that things were better under Donald Trump. They know that. And they don't have the confidence that that Kamala Harris can turn things around, plus the fact they're smart enough, and, and personally, I haven't given them credit for this. And, and I, if, if you are a 20-something or may, maybe even a 30-something, uh, and I have offended you because I have uh, suggested that, that maybe you're going to vote for the Democrat candidate just simply because traditionally – for whatever reason, younger people uh, in their in their early voting years tend to lean in the uh, towards a Democrat candidate. I apologize because many of you are saying, "Hey, I'm fed up with this. I I recognize the fact that she's promising all this stuff, but she hasn't delivered. She's had almost four years now to do some of these things, and she hasn't done it. So why not? You're you're on to her." And I think we have to give young people credit for that. Um, I, I played a bit from you uh, earlier from the uh, from the Cheryl Atkinson interview, where she asked him about several issues, including his handling of, of COVID nineteen pandemic. You know, Kamala Harris loves to talk about the mess that she and Joe Biden inherited. They did inherit a mess, but it wasn't anything uh, because of Donald Trump. Donald Trump didn't cause COVID. Donald Trump tried to respond as best as he could. That was unprecedented. We have not had a situation like we had with COVID. Can you imagine what Joe Biden would have done, how he would have responded if he had been president during the the onset of, of COVID? What a mess, what a real mess we would have been in. Uh, Trump, in, in talking with Atkinson, said, I never got credit for how I handled COVID. Remember that more people died under Biden-Harris than died under Trump, he said. And they had a much easier time because when it came came in here, nobody knew what it was. It came from the Wuhan labs, which I always said. But nobody really knew what it was, where it came from, nothing. They knew nothing, and we got hit. And he's right. It was totally unprecedented. Nothing like we've seen in the past. And hopefully we won't see it again. In, in our lifetime. Now, after speaking about his accomplishments, Atkinson asked him what he does 
to stay healthy. And it's, it's, it's sort of a, a, a funny little exchange here, a light, a light exchange. What are two things you do to stay healthy? Well, I used to play golf a little bit. That gave me, so I don't know, but it seems to be quite a dangerous sport in retrospect. Uh, I try and eat properly. I try, I do the I best, and I try and get some. Healthy. I do, but, but, but proper hamburgers. But uh, I like perhaps all of the wrong food, but then I say, does anybody know what the right food is? You're I right have people that. lecturing yeah. me for years, oh, don't eat this, don't eat that. They're gone. They have passed away long ago. Thought and here changing. I am. So I'm yeah. not sure I want to make too many changes. So, so there you go. Eat hamburgers, but eat, eat good hamburgers. I think that was sort of the, the message there is, is you eat good hamburgers. And he does have that reputation of eating junk food. Uh, we understand that he likes to eat hamburgers and he loves milkshakes. So, uh, by the way, Trump picked up an unlikely endorsement over the weekend. The mayor of a Muslim majority city in Michigan says that he's endorsing Trump in 2024, calling the former commander in chief the right choice for this critical time. Amr Halib is mayor of Detroit area suburb Hamtrak. He announced his endorsement of Trump in a Facebook post over the weekend. While admitted that he and Trump didn't see, didn't agree on everything, he said he regarded the former commander in chief as a man of principles. He said, uh, and he wrote in Arabic on his Facebook page, uh, though it's not, though it's looking good, he may or may not win the election and be the forty seventh president of the United States. But I believe he is the right choice for this critical time. I'll not regret my decision no matter what the outcome would be, and I'm ready to face the consequences. For this and for many other reasons, I announce my support and endorsement for the former and hopefully the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. He added, now let the caravan begin its journey. This is just a starting point. Now, why do you think he felt the need to apologize? Nobody should have to apologize for endorsing anybody. Is that where our our political process has come? that you have to apologize for your endorsement. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of Just the Truth to some friends. Just click on the share button. Send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in November, we got to build an army of conservatives. The way we beat Joe Biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to Just the Truth. Hey, keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line 864-477-JOEY, 864 877-5639. Four seven seven fifty six thirty nine. Your emails always welcome as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the My Pillow special twenty five dollars for the My Towels six piece towel set when you use promo code Joey. Just go to mypillow.com. Always use promo code Joey. We're back again tomorrow. Hope you will be too. Remember, God's got this. He's still in control. <laughs>